Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Come, welcome back to MHGP Pro, the extreme career of Kev Hillman, who had an exciting end to his time in Mexico last time out. It can begin in equally a folk fashion in Italy. So here goes Kev Hillman in for his one qualifying app around this Italian circuit. As it doesn't unfortunately look like we've got a tour guide around here, so let's see who can make our way. On a track which was actually much tighter, I remember. This seems to be a bit more wide open, but then it's going to be deceiving as we've seen so far this season. And someone's diving down our inside Saints Garcia. Just barging us out the way. And now it just blocking us. Let's go a bit wide. Jumps are very much more undulating. Much more expensive. Accentuated? I forget how you say that. Definitely much bigger than they used to be as we try and block off Garcia. You now we go into the second half of the lap, which is all about going up and down hills. So let's see if we can do that on our KTM. Well, ahead of the KTM on our Kawasaki, sure say. Let's hear a minute. He's getting up there. But he's still a long way back in the title race. Let's get out of here, Garcia. I like how we're just racing in qualifying. But it, as you can see, time is off the essence. No long left. So we have to do this. Even if it is costing us some time. It's, oh, I hit the bank. So this is a poor qualifying lap. Thanks to Garcia. It should be under 140, at least 138, mid-pack. As it's Jonas at the top head of Siva, Ayuber, Bogues, Lawrence in the top five on his Suzuki, and Covington, Garcia in seventh, head of Patriel, Olsen and Hillman rounds out. Their top ten as you look outside of there, who got Ivanov at the back. So not the best qualifying, we do get some rewards though, credits and fame wise. So let's see if it can do much better in race one. So there's Hillman revving it up at the start, waiting for the gates to drop. In his first moto, we get underway. For 30 minutes plus a couple of laps, and as you see everyone running wide, Hillman decides to duck down the inside. And oh, it gets very tight as you can see, they're going four wide over the jump. As they go on to the next lap, being pushed wide by Siwa. And he's just allowed loads of riders down the inside, including the KTM twins. And so he gets into the Garcia, gets into Patriel. Unfortunately, that helps Garcia as well. And we get pushed wide by the Spaniard. He's just been bullied by him in Italy. Everyone's had enough of that. Pushes, pa pushes Garcia wide. Right? That was Patriel to get back by, does he? He bounced for fourth. We also got Jonas, of course, right there as well. There's all oh, a couple of riders going wide in front. He has Varna. There's Hillman jumps into third. Ahead of the Suzuki. This is a has Varna. One, two. And, oh. This is tough battling for third already. We're just on the opening lap. Has it got around 20 laps this race? 21? This is not a bad way to start it for Hillman from 10th. Up into the podium places already. Let's see, here goes Jonas though, down the inside. Oh, he's been pushed wide again. It's all, no! Too close to the signs. So he's down to A for all that good work, down to ninth, should I say. There's now Bogus is pushing him towards the signs. And oh, there goes down the Yamaha Patriel. So I'm in back up to seventh. Looking to go into Sif in the final corner. As he holds off Siwa. Goes on to first proper that. Or second proper that, should I say. So he's in Sif. Despite one fall. Let's see if we can keep that to single figures this race. It's a very tough circuit though. Keeping the traction up. As you can see, we've got tough battling as well. So we'll have to use a bit of the rear brake to get out of that corner. You see the smoking everywhere too. They do love their flares. As well, how's Hillman down there? Okay, no speed. 
landing in all twos. Just don't understand it. As he's down tonight. And now just pushes bogeys out of the way. That's why are you bogeys. So Ilman's got to be careful over these jumps then. They've been his downfall twice already. Otherwise he'd be right up there battling for the win at the moment. For lead in this race. There's going to be another race where he's having to charge back through the field. Just like he had in that second race in Mexico. Could be repeating itself here. Let's go over the jumps. Don't okay, too much speed, Hillman. Just be in a rhythm over these jumps. Especially this big jump at the end as well. You get down to second into the left hand. And quickly up to third. And just about get it back up to fifth. The final couple of corners. Very difficult to turn around. As I said, half pack surface here in Italy. Gonna, not going to get much from the tyres from this surface to help turn those tyres. It's all about using the rear brake a bit more. Make sure you're not sliding the bike as well. Got to be on rails a bit more than we were in, say, Mexico. Edwin's doing well in seventh. Not got the pace at the moment. But if he can just settle in, settle in a bit. Just stay up right over that jump especially. Just see if he can gain slightly on the top five his bogus in ninth. He seems to be handling these jumps a bit better, Hillman now. As he is gaining up to sit. Is that Siwo in front? Or is it onto Lawrence? It's one of the Suzuki's. You can see the leaders on the other side going down there while we're going up. That is one of, one of the great things here in Italy. Having this undulating circuit. It was, we did that on the first up and went down. So you don't get it sometimes. It goes into the left-hander. And see, fastest out of times of 35A. I expect him to reach those again in the final third of the race. It does take some time. Get into races, Hillman. Oh, he does a low 36 there. Just as I was saying, it might take him some time to get in those 35s. That's not a bad lap at all. Could take sit for this lap. He continues that pace. And that goes a bit wide there. You can see why this track is oh so tricky just to ride around normally. So many corners and jumps that just lead into corners and jumps. You've just got to be careful with bike placement and careful with the speed over these jumps, especially. So it's not a flat out blast on the throttle at all. Like, say, guitar was. Surprise on the Qatar was mostly flat. Apart from in the corners, of course. But you could definitely be aggressive with the frot around it. You can't be round here. As you can see, just getting on the frot slightly early, the bike just slides wide. There's no grip in the surface to play with. And after setting up 36, someone's a bit slow this that. So maybe the consistency will come in that final third. And see, so he's still not far off the top five. It's just settle into the rhythm at the moment. Settle into this race. Which is something we haven't said a lot in the first races of these rounds. It's often been the second race where it gets together. So that's a 37. That was a poor lap time, Ilman. Want to get consistent in those 36s. So once again, what is it over that jump? It's not kind of pushing you out there. It's just, just stupid for Milman. Let's go through these jumps here and see it's still close behind. There's good popping in front. Since he barely carry any speed over that jump, then a bit more over this, and then barely any over this. Good battle for the podium in front. 
This helmet's a bit all over the place now. I thought he'd settle into a rhythm, but he's just hit that 36 and then has just not been able to hit the corners just like he did on that lap. There we go, a bit more rear brake, that helps. Trying to slide the bike into the left-hander did not help. He's still got Bogues in ninth. It's almost into the sign. Come on. Get your act together. This is been incredibly sloppy after that 36. But you can see he's now losing track of the top five. Another race will come to him, but we're in the frustrating part of the race where there's pace there, but it's just not hooked up at the moment. It's not like it is in second races. That's why we do so well in second races, because we've had a race already. We know the track conditions, we know the surface. And so we know how to hook it up. In first races, you know, just to that qualifying lap, we're still very much learning a track, especially that. Why is he so slow? Don't need to break in that corner. You just need to roll off the throttle. It looks like. So we go through the massive jump. And you see he's gaining back up now. No. Too much speed. Just about holds on though. So there we go. He's starting to get back into that room. You can see sit from front. Maybe just needs be a rabbit that chases that carrot and that's what's happening now that you can see sit it's got a visual aid that but like on his qualifying app yeah it was messy but it's still top 10 while he's battling someone which is not bad at all so we've got landed that a bit better massive crowds around here this is a fantastic place to look around. Look at all those trees and the hills surrounding. It's a motocross track. It's a bit like, say, Austria and the Red Bull Ring. Seeing all those hills and mountains surrounding says, there you go, another 36 from Hill and that's more like it. So there are wonderful places it seems to go and watch races. And have race tracks. As we complete the first third of the race, Hillman has survived with a couple of falls. But he's in the top 10 at least, and he's closing down Sip. And he's getting better now. This could be, for the first time, a second consecutive of that, which is decent in this race. He's found a bit of a wide line there, hasn't he? But that's the thing we're doing in this first race. As I said the unfamiliarity with the track. Just exploring different lines. No, once again, when we're battling, it would be very much one line, which is a bit disappointing. Let's go downhill. Still got the gap to bogeys. Bottom left. I don't understand the guys. I thought it just showed us around. Are they? It's Bogus Hillman's rival. Is that why he's been shown a lot? Because we have seen him interact with Hillman. And those comments at the end of races, but Hillman's got no rivals at the moment. I thought it'd be Olsen, but hasn't been speaking at the end. So we've got another 36, and he's really gaining now on Sip. As you can see, he's getting into that rhythm now. And he's just much more confident as well with the bike. And himself now riding this MX2 bike. Even though it's just the fifth round of the season. We've got a long season here. Almost 20 rounds. As well, he goes... I don't understand that again. Previous lap did exactly the same, survived. This lap did not. There's one thing we've still got to figure out. 
And I was thinking it's meant to land on two wheels at the same time, but that's what we did the previous lap, it almost exactly the same. If you get the action replay up, close angle of us landing, it would look almost exactly the same. So I don't understand it. Just feels very cheap falling like that. And it's just happened for the third time for Hillman. Thought it was going to be our fourth. But he stays up right. And just as he's gaining on Sith, it's a bit like that second race of Mexico. Just as he's gaining on the owners, he gets falling back. Just as he caught up the Sith, he's falling back again. As we approach the halfway mark of this race, which was very hairy at the start, but it's settled down a lot. And see, he's dropped into the low 39s there. He lost three seconds compared to his previous lap. That's how much that fall cost him. To so go through the left. Let's see if we can take this left without any brakes. Oh, easy. Easy. Look at that line. Okay, so much momentum downhill as well. Definitely got to open up the corner a bit more like we did there. And again, it's just not about... And he's down again, exactly the same. That's just stupid. Absolutely stupid. Uh, so there's a good battle for third going on, though, in front. Good battle behind as well for ninth. And you see Hillman's lost touch of Sith. He's around five seconds back now. Just as he was around a second back. So he's got to get a bit more aggressive now after that couple of falls. Well, there's one man who can really get it together in his last third of the race, it is Hillman. And starting in the first motor of a top five for once. Okay, he's lots of confidence into the second moto. So we'll see if Hillman can do that. He's really getting aggressive now, as you can see on this lap as we approach the halfway mark. The lines with the boundary of the track. There's a low 37. That's a good consolidation lap. After that horror lap. And especially with the fall in the middle as well. He's a second quicker. A couple of seconds quicker, actually the previous lap and they had, both had a fall so not bad at all for Millman. as we're coming up to the left hander from hell as you can see there carry no speed at all over the jump that's how you do it as he seemed to be able to land that next jump pretty easily and look at that turn on the rear that was beautiful as Patrick is still outside the top 10 and 11, for Nick Ilm, he's caught right back up to sixth already. Showing he's got the pace. It's just a very long race. It's been very difficult just to get into that rhythm and be consistent. Maybe it's a sign again that the Suzuki's dropping speed in the second half of the race. It seems to be a familiar pattern, especially for Hunter Lawrence, who's always a superb start to the Australian. I don't seem to be able to get the results that he deserves in the top five or batting for a podium. It's there, we just landed on the front wheel, but nothing happened after that jump. Do not get it. But we might have a battle on our hands. I know it's been a while, hasn't it, this race? It's been like half the race. Hillman has been by himself, but now look at that 35-3. Oh, he's motoring now. It's a virtual final third of this race. The push for the top five begins again. I mean, we've had a couple of aborted attempts. His bogus are now dropped side outside the top ten. And it is Sewell in front. Swiss rider, a veteran of MX2. Bowed Hillman in his previous time here. And they're doing battle again now. Four sit Hillman round the outside. Again, just one line note. Oh, but he's found the inside for the left. Oh, he outbreaks himself. And you can see fifth right in front as well. Oh, but he's pushed out the Swiss rider now, up into sixth. Now here we can see a top five right in front. As we 
to grab the right hander. Again, taking that wide line, but then that's so good a launch off the corners. To go over the jump, the crowd going wild as well to the sides. Not as wild as before in the first third of the race. Maybe getting a bit tired now. It's not actually that sunny, it's cloudy, isn't it? Over there it's I didn't see that in his era. It was normally very sunny. So that launch in front. Someone sets off 34. Hello. Where's he finding all this that time from? He just pushed the accelerate button and now look at him. Absolutely flying. Now he's even battling with C1 that previous lap. So a 33 definitely possible for Hillman. As he goes downhill. Catch her up onto ninth Hillman. Down the inside, up into the top five now. He takes the wide line though in the next corner. Holds it over the jump though. So he's into the top five. Now he's just got the catch up to the top. No, he hasn't. He's down again. The top four all over each other in front. It's still very close. As Hillman gets a bit excited. Into the left hander. But just as he got going again, his fifth fall. And again, landing on the jump. Well, he's done that before, but he survived. On this occasion, he hasn't. As he goes for the right hand, and it's like he's held off C. What? He goes for the left hand, he went for the tight line, but you see the, the advantage of going wide. See, we're showing it off beautifully there. Get a superb run off the corner. So for Hillman. After a couple of fast and furious laps, it's all about getting back into the top five. But Seaver's not giving up without a fight. And it looks like he's held on in sip. They go for the final couple of corners. And look at that, 38. He's lost around five seconds out of that. Thanks to that mistake. And having the battle with Seaver. the jumps again just roll off the throttle don't have to break it all until it's these tight corners they all moving very aggressive not over that jump of course maybe not over the jump after this one as well after experience in the previous lap so sort of clips the inside bank gets away with it Bike just not turning as he wanted. That's the frustrating thing around it. Sometimes you just carry a touch too much speed. It's not just tenths you cost, it feels like half a second you cost in yourself. Look again, all over the bank, Hillman. He's been aggressive with his lines. Maybe it's the biggest change as well from the early part of the race. His lines around this track. Being a bit more aggressive in some corners. Not into that jump though, I didn't see really backed off the throttle. Otherwise he would have been in trouble. No, he gets on the power, that's his first proper mistake. And then the final third, when are you expecting to push on? He's now falling back. Sixth fall of the race. First proper fall though. But count it. Uh, so the other stuff seem random events that actually seem proper from Hillman just being a bit too aggressive on the throttle trying to set up the run up the hill so he'll maybe make a move into the first couple of corners so he's back down to 7th it's been his favourite position this race hasn't it well, this is not lucky number 7 is falling back because of stupidity number seven. Can okay, you make the move around the outside? Oh, a bit too wide. Oh, but Siwa a bit wide into the next corner. Hillman just muscles out Siwa. Gets up to sixth. Now, can he launch himself towards that top five again? I think he can rule out any position higher than... What the hell? How is he down there? I want to say a mistake, but... He's done that every lap again, and now he's down for some reason. Uh, 
Um, and after those middle laps, it's just gone a bit fast too furious. So he's back down to seventh. Again, fifth is what he's aiming for in this race because I don't think he can get any higher now after those mis well that mysterious fall. First fall is definitely because he just revved it up way too much in the rear. That time he literally just fell down because of the leg of it. Absolutely. I don't know from Ilman. Got seven minutes to go. You got five or six laps. It's again the rear trying to get away. You're just getting a bit tired, Hillman. It is a very demanding track. Don't blame him if he is. He goes up the hill. There you go, settled the rear a bit better over that jump. As he's catching up to see where he once again makes a mistake. There you get the stupid thing, agonizing things. You can see a top five. You can see them around 10 seconds up the road. Just all race long. Just very agonising. He's got the pace, just not quite got it as what is going on for that left hander. Hillman, get your act together. This is normally when you're strong. Now you're falling apart in this race as once again. Going a bit wide. Do we actually have ruts round here? Is this is what happening. This is what occurring. So they didn't feel like this at the beginning of the race. Might actually be what's happening. But then again, it doesn't really feel like it slows you down that much. Like you can just push as hard as you normally can. That is one big criticism of this. Of MHGP Pro. As here we go, back into the 36s for Hillman. It's not quite the 34s that he should be in, or 35s. But it's a start. Once again, drifting wide. Let's go downhill. We've still got Patrell in ninth. It is a bit more difficult getting out of that hairpin. I can definitely feel that. Let's go downhill. Rev it up. Over these jumps. Once again, balancing that rear. Let's come on, Sif is right there. You've been past this guy like three times already, Ilman. You can get him again. You can see taking a bit of a wider line than that left-hander now. That might be what caused that mysterious crash before. Just too tight a line. Let's try to help the next left-hander. That's not having it at all. Once again, that rear battling. Hillman. Well, he doesn't need it to. As we go downhill to the end. For another lap with less than four minutes remaining. You can see Zip right there again. Just breaked way too aggressive in the left hand and compromised him for the right. It's a 34. Should have been a low 34, though. He messed up that last couple of corners. Very poor for Millman. As he should, he's used to the track now. He's used to the lines. He shouldn't be making mistakes like that. Should be on rails like everyone else. Is he in diving spot? He is down the inside of Siwa. 91 holding on, though, is he? Not quite through. The left hand of Hillman. Very slow over the next jump. Holds on. So now he can chase after fifth. And there is that battle for the podium in front. As I told you, so agonising. Seeing that all race long. And Hillman's got the pace to be with them. No doubt about that. Let's see if he can fix that in the second race. But first, let's get the top five. With less than three minutes remaining. We've got four laps remaining. Goes uphill, downhill, through the left hand. He can just about glimpse fifth in front. We go over the jump, crowd enjoying it. Oh, Hillman not. What the hell? 
How has he got that wrong for the first time this race? What an absolute idiot. This is now his seventh fall, I think. At least he's not in double figures, but that's still a disappointing number, even if most aren't his fault, in my view. And just as he got up to seventh, he does a 37 crashes and now has to get back up into zip. Or just gets into zip, should I say. So he's got to pass Siva for like the fifth time this race. He cannot afford to do this in the second race if he wants to win. And actually gain points on the riders in front who he's now losing points to. So the likes of Jonas, Garcia, Covington, Olsen. Guys, he's chasing in the championship and he's doing shit like this. Can't be doing that, Hillman. Got to get your act together. As you got Sibo in front. Because he's already over two race wins behind Jonas. I know it's early in the season, but still, over 50 points to make up. There's a lot of points. He's got Sibo right in front. He's, not, he's probably not destined to get a top five now. He's destined to finish sixth with all these mistakes. So, oh, tries to go down the inside of Siwa, not quite working. And off the corner, that bike has no grip because he's slightly offline. Now let's see if he can get this section right. I say at the feeling he just landed on the wrong side of that big ass right in the middle. Oh, and he's down. What? Again, he's down on a jump where he just landed normally. Absolutely stupid mechanic in this game. I have no idea why they introduced, it feels like fake toughness to the game. It feels like you can land exactly the same but get two different outcomes. Okay, if it actually felt like I was doing something wrong, I would understand, but it doesn't on those jumps, on those falls. That's what's frustrating about it, and that's why it feels a bit fake going down like that. And when you would watch the replays as well, like really slow it down, your rider just falls instantly. Like it's almost predetermined that you're going to fall. So, yeah. Not happy about that either. There's lots of things to, to complain about with this edition. Mainly that it's just not as fun as the previous MXGP games or motocross. Or supercross, should I say. So you all got three to go, two and a half laps to go. I can see the direction they're trying to head into, it's just they're in the middle phase of that direction milestone, and so this game, as I said previously, just doesn't quite work. It feels like an F1 2015, as Covington's leading, trying to grab that win that he didn't get in Mexico. In 2015 laid the groundwork for the next few games, but 2015 in itself was like half a game. It was not very good at all. Is a dreadful game for Cody's. And that's what MHGP Pro feels like. It's not a dreadful game like F1 2015. It's got good sports, bad, lots of bad sports you could talk about. But it's just making its way to where it needs to be. And so it's that difficult middle edition. As Siwa just pushes Hillman into the sign. Hillman not very happy about that. Pushes Siwa wise. With one and a half laps to go in the 91. He's battling hard again for Sip. Oh, and he's trying to block off Hillman. Hillman having none of it though. Once again, we have an elbow to elbow battle right at the end of a race. Unfortunately, it's not for the win though. It's just for Sip. For Hillman, that's an improvement in the first race. So now he's just pushing 91 wide everywhere. Elbows out racing. His motocross. And you're seeing that with Hillman in this race. With Seawers, well, once again. As 
It looks like finally, the Macau Riders up into Sip is coming and begins the final lap. It's only around 20 seconds up the road, I reckon. After all of this, after all the falls, is that about seven falls, Hillman? So he goes right in the first corner. Uh, it doesn't cost you too much. So it'll be around 20 seconds back. Shows good pace. And there's fifth on the other side. Unfortunately, he's a bit too far back for that Hillman. Need to take like 10 seconds out on this lap, which I'm not sure he's capable of doing. He can maybe take up to five. Not quite 10. Goes over the jump. No, there's that battle for third again or for the podium places right in front. I think Covenant's just a bit out in front, but that, I'm guessing that's a battle for second then. And that's been like that all race long. It's on his final lap. It's been a difficult race for Hillman, just not quite got into the rhythm at all, I would say. Finally got into the top five, then chucked it away. So they get sick. As I said, in the first race of a, of a round again, in the first motor, it's been a rare occurrence this season so far. So it's a step up at least. So moving in the right direction as Covington wins across the line. He's actually around 15 seconds up the road. That is incredibly frustrating. And across the line with a 35. And sixth. Solid points. So after 21 laps, Covington wins by just less than three tenths of a hold. So we didn't realize that close between the Hasfar and the Riders. There's the KTNs of Jonas and Garcia. Then it would have been the Suzuki's if Hillman didn't run the show. And run the Noah's Ark in sit behind. Hunter Lawrence, who finally got that top five. I said earlier in the race, he, did, he kind of falls back in races. Well, he actually held on. This time, less than 10 seconds off the winner for Hillman. 13.8 seconds back. Definitely the closest he's been to the victory in race one. With Seawood in seventh, Iber in eighth, Hatchell in ninth. Rogers rounds out the top 10 head of Van Dotnik. And then we look through the field. Ivanov is right at the back. So 25 for Covington, 20 for Jonas. Hillman got 15, so he's lost up most 10 points to his title rivals. Uh, there's a good amount of credits and famed earned. So we head to the second moto. Can Hillman grab another victory in the second race of a round? Sound fortune. We'll find out next time.